So today I'm going to share with you my idea for <clears throat> a method or experiment that allows you to choose the correct vermouth to put in your martini. Um, the origin of this experiment is actually my ignorance about vermouth. So I grew up in the U.S. and I grew up in a place where there was basically just martini and Rossi available. So that's what I always used. And as you know, I live overseas, so the first time I tried to make a martini uh, in my current location, the only thing I could find was Cinzano uh, Bianco. So I bought that, and I tried to make a martini with it, and it was really disgusting, and I was shocked because I didn't know there was any difference between martini vermouth and Cinzano vermouth. So <clears throat> since that time, uh, I made a bunch of martinis with Martini and Rossi, which I found eventually. Uh, and then I moved again, and I couldn't find Martini again, so I found this uh, Noily Prat. I don't know how you pronounce it. I think it's Noily Prat. And I bought that, and I kind of had the same experience again. And uh, But this time, the, the Cinzano Bianco, I thought, was very bad to, um, to drink on its own. But the Noily Prat, I think it's it tastes okay on its own so I thought why don't I really like the martini made with it and so I think I finally figured it out and I made an experiment that will let you uh, see the difference between these martinis at home as well so what you need is a bottle of martini and Rossi a bottle of this Noily Prat um, some olives I don't think it really matters what kind of olives a small spoon glass of water and a piece of um, a baguette and an, a lemon and a lemon peeler and maybe if your lemon is really poor quality you might need some lemon juice too I don't know so anyway here's what I did I used the peeler and I took off um, all the peel off of this lemon in very small pieces to increase the surface area of it and I put half of the peel in one glass and half in the other and then I took uh, a few olives and a few spoonfuls of brine and I put them in these other glasses and then I poured the respectively the Noily Prat in these glasses and the Martini in these glasses and then I let them sit for a while and stirred them around a little bit to let the flavors mix so what I was trying to find out was how does the vermouth interact with the garnish um, and so I've this isn't a martini, I've basically removed the gin. So my idea is that the gin is so strong that it kind of, uh, if you drink a martini that's made with ingredients that don't match well, uh, it might not really taste that good to you, but you might not be able to identify why that is because the gin is so strong. So I've removed the gin. So this is just vermouth and olives and brine and vermouth and uh, lemon peel. And so then you just taste them. Very simple. So um, the first thing, and so I usually make my martinis in America with Tanqueray Gin, Martini and Rossi, uh, Vermouth, and Olives. So my, my first thing is just to taste this. Mmm. Ugh. So it's briny. Um, and that's not a drink, so it's like half brine and half vermouth. Uh, and so that's not really a drink that you would want to drink. It doesn't taste good. But it's not completely terrible. The, you can taste that the, the brine and the martini uh, don't really clash with each other. They're, it needs something else in it, and they're not really in the right ratios and everything. But it's, it's you know, it's not, it doesn't make you want to spit it out. On the other hand, ugh, the no, ugh. The Noily Prat with the brine tastes really vile. It's really disgusting. Um, the Martini Vermouth has a flavor profile which is quite a bit more like wine. Uh, and the Noi Noily Prat is much sweeter. You can taste whatever kind of um, alcohol they've put in it to fortify it. It comes through much more. There's a lot more spice flavor in it. So I would have guessed that the brine would have tasted better with the Noily Prat. But that's not the case. It actually is does much better with the martini. Now, with the lemon, 
Okay, so the lemon and the martini is, is okay. It doesn't make you want to spit it out. Um, but what about this one? Ah, oh, that's actually quite good. So, lemon peel with Norley Pratt is better than the lemon peel with the martini and Rossi. So, here's the situation. This is by far the worst combination. Noily Pratt with olives is really disgusting. It makes you want to spit it out. It, it, it's vile. Uh, martini and Rossi with olives is, is okay. It's not something you'd drink on its own, but it doesn't match so badly. Martini and Rossi with, uh, with lemon is okay. It's not the best choice for lemon, though which is the Noily Pratt. This is something, Noily Pratt with lemon, you could just drink that by itself. It tastes great. So anyway, so that's my experiment. So the answer is that uh, part of the genius of the martini is that gin, um, with its uh, juniper qualities and floral qualities, can be pulled in different directions depending on what you mix with it. What you mix with it can enhance... Um, or deflate certain flavor profiles and, and certain things match better. So you want to pick the right in ingredients. If you decide to make a martini with uh, the Noily Pratt and lemon, that's going to work much better than Noily Pratt and olive. So, so similarly, if you want to use olive in your martini, you should need to go with the, the martini and Rossi, because olive and Noily Pratt is a really bad combination. Uh, if you have trouble tasting the differences between these, to me the differences are quite clear. If you have trouble tasting the differences, I recommend you can you know, use um, a little baguette and water in between the tastings. Um, if you know anything about the history of the martini, at this point you may be thinking, ah, but martini and Rossi is an Italian vermouth. Noli Prat is a French vermouth. And the recipes for martinis going back however far, call for French vermouth. Well, there's an answer to that, which is that uh, the term French vermouth in those old recipes is actually a double entendre. Well, I don't know if that's quite right, but it doesn't mean vermouth made by a French company. It means French-style vermouth, which is a white and dry vermouth. So if Italian vermouth means... Uh, which I don't even have here. Italian vermouth is the red, sweet kind of vermouth. French vermouth means uh, white and dry. So any white, dry vermouth um, is an appropriate match uh, in a historic cocktail recipe. Now, when, I'm, when I say historic, I'm talking about like the 1960s, 1950s. I'm not talking about the old, old-fashioned martinis, okay? So anyway, that's... Um, that's my lesson. I hope you I hope you enjoy this video and I hope you can do this experiment on your own. Uh, I'm not saying that you need to only drink Martini and Rossi or Noily Prat. There's lots of vermouths out there now. You can also make vermouth at home by yourself. Um, and but the the trick is you get your vermouth and then see combine it with some other ingredients without the gin before you make your cocktail and uh, see which things match best. Anyway, that's it. Thank you very much for watching and uh, enjoy your martinis. Bye-bye.